So my name is Doug Gray, and I'm happy to uh, have a conversation today with Tori. Hi, Doug. Thanks so much for having me. Absolutely. Why don't you tell us about yourself? Yeah, absolutely. So I am Tori. I am uh, the Director of Learning Experience for Tamron Learning. Um, a question that I often get is, how did you end up in that kind of role? Um, and like many people in this space, it's because of my own family background. So I come from a multi-generational family enterprise, uh, seven generations, 150 years officially this year. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, it is exciting. It's a, it's a big celebration for the family and for the business. But kind of interestingly, I really didn't know we had a family enterprise until I was in high school. Uh, my grandfather had this other business that uh, was far more attractive to him. And so I knew lots about that. We had done family things around that, but not this multi-generational manufacturing firm in Wisconsin. So fast forward to my senior year of high school and we have a family meeting. It ends terribly, truly terribly, cataclysmic, fist fights. Everyone leaves that saying, we're never doing this again. Let's get rid of the business. Uh, I had a aunt uh, who said, you know, I, I will never speak to you guys again. This was so traumatic, so terrible. And I did what any rational 17 year old would do is said, I'll go to college and I will fix this problem. <laughs> How do you think that ended? Do you think I solved the problem? College wasn't the answer, at least. So where'd you go to school and, uh, and what'd you study and keep going? This is fascinating to me. I'm imagining the fist fights, but I don't really want to imagine. Oh, this. So yeah. keep going. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, as it happens, our family attorney or someone sort of like in the advisor ecosphere um, went to Stetson University for law school, and I was absolutely dying to get out of Wisconsin, freezing cold winters, and aforementioned crazy family was there. Um, and so I went and I toured the campus, absolutely fell in love, uh, was going to like do a business degree, ended up changing my major five separate times uh, before ending up with a family enterprise degree um, and sort of like just a strange roundabout way to end up there, um, but really came out of that thinking I was going to do one of two things, either save the family farm and, you know, do internal consulting for the family, or two, work with next gens. Um, because I'd had this sort of not great experience, and we really didn't have sort of education and empowerment and these kinds of things, and we were whacking our axe around trying to figure out how to uh, do governance. Um, and I thought there must be a better way. I was correct. There was a better way. Um, <laughs> and But it was not me as it happened. So uh, I went, I worked for a big bank for a year, did not love that experience. Um, all that is sort of this personality didn't do super well in the um, big bank environment. And then uh, after being fired, I think it's important for me to like own that I was fired um, because a lot of young people, there's a lot of shame attached to that. Um, so I left and went to look for a different job and found a multi-generational family enterprise. Worked there for close to a decade um, and probably would still be working there, except for instead I ended up uh, moving cross country with my husband to be closer to family in the middle of COVID. And uh, when someone reached out to me and said, hey, do you want to work with next gens? I said, I finally arrived. Uh, I am ready to work with next gens because my mentor coming out of college gave me one piece of advice, which was to get older, um, to be able to work with next gens. Like no one wants to work with a 21 year old, uh, which may or may not be true. Um, but I did take that advice, got lots of interesting uh, experience in the world, you know, now sit on the board of our operating company, work with our family office, have worked with other families. Uh, and so that's how I've landed where I am today, creating curriculum and engaging with next gens and doing a lot around sort of that uh, external competencies for young inheritors. You have such a marvelous story and enthusiasm as you describe it. Uh, I love your candor, obviously. And um, I'm curious what advice you would give to other folks with similar stories. 
Yeah, that's a great question. Um, more humility than I had probably. Uh, <laughs> understanding that there, uh, it is not a one person job is something that if I could go back to my 20-ish year old self and say, there's no way that you're going to do this, um, that would be really helpful. Um, I think if you feel compelled to try and make an impact on the family, pull in other people. Um, so I am an early labeled family champion, and that's something that I really took on, um, you know, as part of that family champion research, because it was so much part of my identity, and really ignored the other stakeholders, most importantly, my siblings. Um, and so I could have used their support. So I think pull in other people, it's not just for you. It's great advice. I think often there's this notion that there's one silver bullet rather than a team of advisors or a team of champions, let's say. Yeah. And um, I'm also aware that you are uh, the kind of person that people will follow because of your enthusiasm. And I'm guessing that you've had a massive impact, impact on other next gens. Is that accurate? Yeah, I, I would say that is accurate both in and out of my family system. Um, this is something I talk about a lot. Uh, certainly when I was younger, I called it the sledgehammer. The only skill that I actually had, though, was being sort of explosive, follow me, um, a lot of where we are at in terms of governance and ownership in relation to the family enterprise is because I was throwing grenades. I was saying, I will not own this company with so-and-so. Um, so it's, I'm fine with me or them, but we got to figure this out. Um, over time, I have learned how to um, diversify my toolkit a little bit. Uh, but yeah, I think the, the impact on the family system has been significant and I try to empower other next gens who I see who have sort of that, they see the problem um, and they want to try and, and impact their own family system and hopefully can learn from some of what I did wrong because my greatest, uh, I feel adult lesson is I know nothing. The older I get, the less I know. Boy, that's so true uh, for me as well. So back to your, your nuclear family, you had a sledgehammer <clears throat> yes. You made some strong statements about those you could and couldn't work with. And over time, what's happened? Yeah, um, I think we've had some really fantastic wins, but also some collateral damage along the way. Um, we did cut a branch of the family off. And I think in retrospect, if I could rewind 10 years, I would have approached that differently. There's some big tension in the nuclear family system as well. Um, part of this is because who I am as a person is if your value set doesn't align with mine. Um, and I did lots and lots and lots of value work uh, as part of my undergrad, like defining who I am and what it means to me. Um, but now when I run into people whose value set doesn't align with me, I sort of push against them. Uh, so where we are today is seven generations with four shareholders. I will say I say five shareholders because we bought my mom out, but she is still a stakeholder um, as though she were an owner. Uh, that's just some estate planning going on, right? Um, but so 150 years, five women owning a manufacturing company is a pretty interesting strategy to get there. Um, it's nice. We don't have some of the problems that families might run into, which is having to deal with 100 plus shareholders, right? Decision making is pretty easy. Everyone's pretty easy to deal with. Um, but we've done a lot of consensus building over the years from that fist fight to today. There's some evolutionary psychologists who would say that matriarchs did a better job than patriarchs over time at building community and uh, evolving, helping us are, are, exist eons ago. I'm certainly aware of some examples like yours where decentralized um, family systems like yours are being led by women. And I'm also aware that some people say that's an important good thing. It's maybe overdue, but it's a good thing <laughs> that the top-down patriarchal views of um, primogenitor, for instance, yeah. are a little archaic and a little silly because of their rigidity. And what we need to do is include more 
inclusive voices, different voices, women outnumber men in, in colleges and universities and in certain uh, work sectors. So what advice would you have, please, for any of those people, male or female, who are not maybe uh, voicing as much as you do? You've done a marvelous job of voicing. Yeah, right? that's a great a great question. Um, and I've, I've gotten sort of that exact question before. Uh, so what do I do if I'm not yeah. outspoken? What if I don't have a sledgehammer? Um, and I, I will come back to find your team. Um, I, I love to sort of think about the hero's journey, right? Great for um, empowering ourselves in a, in a chaos environment, but a huge part of the hero's journey is finding the other people who sort of support you along the way. Like Frodo never would have been able to throw the, throw the ring into <laughs> Uh, the fire if he didn't have all these sort of people helping. So that's the biggest thing is you don't have to be the voice. You can leverage whatever your sort of personal skill set is in that dynamic, pull other people in, find your Tory in your life who is willing to listen and hear you and have her throw or him throw the grenades and be the sledgehammer. Temper that person maybe. <laughs> but yeah, I'll, I'll come back to finding finding the team, finding the support systems in and out of that nuclear family, family enterprise, whatever it looks like to support you. Oh, that could be a book title, Finding Your Tory. <laughs> because it's suggestive. It's like Finding Nemo, but deeper. <laughs> yep, exactly right. Or maybe it's plural. So let's talk about what's next. What do you see this next in family business enterprises uh, broadly? Any, any thoughts? Yeah, something I'm really excited about um, and a little bit terrified because I think there's some practical implications is with uh, particularly Gen Z, younger millennials, this rejection of wealth. Um, so I think this is a it's going to be a learning journey um, because it it's super reactive, right, to say, I'm going to give. 90% away, uh, or I'm going to give it all away and I'm going to be a starving artist. I think we can have more impact uh, by being responsible stewards of wealth and by being conscious about how we want to see wealth perpetuate. Uh, so I'm really interested to sort of see where this goes, particularly, of course, we can't have a conversation in this industry right now without talking about the great wealth transfer. There's a massive, massive amount of wealth transferring to young, not all young people, but eventually it will pass down to uh, these young people. And how we're thinking about wealth as a society right now is a little bit icky. Uh, so I'm really curious to kind of see where that goes. And especially in relation to the fact that a lot more wealth will be passing to Gen X women, for example. So it's going to be transformational. It's going to be interesting. We're facing really huge societal problems right now. So I think I'm, I'm excited. I'm curious. I am biting my nails on how we prepare people to do this. You're not alone in that. So one of the uh, conversations I had an hour ago was with somebody who talked about the impact of the giving pledges and the lack of impact. So some of those billionaires are in fact going to distribute assets over time. And there could be 74 trillion in wealth distributed over the next couple of decades. But when and how? And if it goes to a dynastic trust and it's restricted in its uh, investing, what does that really mean? If it doesn't go back into the marketplace, it's not liquid capital. Right. That really means that the families of wealth are going to retain the wealth, maybe, and we're not creating social change. What's your comment or thought about that? Yeah, that's something I think about a lot. Um, I It is very hard for me as a G7 member to not feel a little bit like this is oligarchy. Um, <laughs> and I hope that there are good advisors behind these young people who are part of dynastic families, mm -hmm. who are helping them invest in their values or helping them act out on whatever cash they can, can theoretically get out and have um, have impact over. I hope they are empowered to do such a thing. Um, I think there's a lot of top-down finger-shaking that that is naive and a young person's 
thing. So, um, yeah, it's it'll be interesting to see what actually comes of wealth passing. Yeah, perfect. So let's wrap this up. Uh, commonly, I, I invite people to share resources, and and I know that you're so well connected. You've been doing this for a long time. So, what resources would you recommend, and, and how do people contact you? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I would be remiss to not plug Tamron Learning, where I am a highly activated and highly interested um, for a wealth education platform for adult inheritors. But there are so many fantastic resources out there, especially if you are a so-called family champion or you're, you're watching this and you're thinking, you know, how do I sort of take next steps in this space there's so many fantastic people. And I know this is like maybe a millennial boomer kind of take, but I love LinkedIn. I spend a lot of time just taking in information that way, um, curating your algorithm and your channels to have diverse perspectives uh, related to the sort of challenges around wealth ownership and for next gens and that kind of thing. Um, I will say resource generation is a group that is doing some interesting stuff around uh, being a young person managing wealth um, and thinking about how you want to give it away. So I would definitely think about that as well. Um, if you want to contact me, you can find me on LinkedIn, of course. Um, you can always shoot me an email as well. Uh, T Holly at windway.com. I'm sure the internet will have information related to that. Um, but yeah, generally throw it in a search bar and you will find me. Tremendous. Tori, thanks for your candor and for your expertise. And um, I appreciate you. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me. Really always uh, enjoy time with you. Yeah.